welcome back to the studio and to another foundation lesson. I know we've done the color wheel how many times now? At least you've heard me rambling on about my modern color theory with primary cyan, primary magenta, and primary yellow. And we've all learned how to mix all of these beautiful colors. If you haven't, go back to the first lesson in Color My Life, and that's where you will learn how you can get this beautiful array of colors by using only these three paints. And, um, and I have Golden Fluid acrylics here. As usual, Golden is my favorite because they're very highly pigmented. Today I wanted to talk to you about something really important. We've co it's come up quite a few times in class and in our Facebook group, which is value. You know, value is the lights to darks. And I've always said, put your yellow at the top and your darkest colors here at the bottom. And there's a reason why when we make the color wheel, I always teach that these colors go to the top instead of um, other alternatives you may have seen. And that is because I look at the color wheel as also a value scale. So here we have our lightest colors are going to range somewhere here and our darkest colors are going to range somewhere here. And it's really hard to see value in color compared to seeing value right here in a black and white scale. So I wanted to review it again. It's really important when we're creating artwork to have a range of value. Most of our art colors end up in this mid-tone range, which is pretty much here. And these are just maybe somewhere around here. And these darker ones are pretty dark here, but a lot of our artwork, we have this like overwhelming majority of it is in this mid-tone range. And that doesn't create enough interest and drama. So I wanted to kind of do a little fun experiment with you and show you when you look at these colors where they would hit here on this scale. Obviously, I've already told you I'm going for yellow as being my lightest color, but it's still not going to end up being at the lightest at the top. I'm gonna to play a few guessing games here because I'm not perfectly perfect at this, but I do know when I'm looking at it approximately where I think that that's gonna hit on that scale. We'll just uh, try it out here, okay? So I'm working through these different colors, kind of playing my guessing game. I know these are gonna be a good mid-range here, and let me get my clean brush. And here, and this beautiful green here that we love maybe somewhere around here. How about this mid color green? And so I'm going through here. This is something you can do yourself. All I did was create myself a little column and take my time blending the black and the white until I had some even ranges. And now I'm taking the colors that I've mixed myself. You can take any tube of paint that you have and you can mix it up yourself as well or just put them on here on your own scale to see where you think that they're gonna hit on that value. And this is just for pure saturated colors. We're going darker here for sure. And I have no doubt that that purple is gonna be down here and that dark, dark blue also. Down here is my darkest pure colors. And I can even come in with the original cyan. I'm sure it would hit somewhere in here. And I think I've got my magenta. I did put that in there. So here we have some of these pure saturated colors. Pure saturation means it's the original hue. We haven't darkened it or lightened it by using anything in particular. No black or white has been added. Um, but what happens if we do add white? We know we're gonna make a color lighter, but are we gonna make it light so that it ends up white? Or are we gonna have a nice mid-tone range? It makes beautiful colors. So we're no longer here in our color, color range, which was the original color. Now we're moving ourselves down that scale and maybe we'll put it right, maybe on track with this orange it could have gone maybe a little lighter it just depends on how you mix it and that's kind of the fun of playing with it if you want something that's really really light how about what happens when we mix the white with this beautiful green now remember to make a lighter green we're adding more yellow if you want to keep it a pure saturated color but we can make a tint by just adding white and that's going to change it a lot as well and that's a very light color but here's a question on the opposite. So I've added white to make something lighter in value. 
But what about darker? You can add black. There's no doubt about that. Another way to look at the darker colors is when I when I mixed the cyan with a little drop of the red, that's when we were making our darker blues and our really dark purples. So when you're mixing your own colors here, you can get darker shades just by mixing these very dark saturated colors. For example, we still have a very dark color green here by just adding a little bit of yellow and we've got this beautiful blue green. Um, you want to make that a little bit darker. Here's another way to make it a little bit darker. Add a little bit of its opposite and we've got ourselves a very nice dark color. I think that one's going to still end up here almost black. What's amazing about that is that I don't need to use black in order to get dark colors when I'm creating value. What I've just done there is make a far more interesting beautiful color than black itself. And remember the Impressionists when they painted they didn't use black. For the most part what they chose to do was use the color scale here as their lights and their darks. Yes of course they used white but for their darkest darks when they had shadows and dark parts of their painting they use these darker shades and hues um, that we've been able to create ourselves here by mixing colors and like I just showed you by taking that beautiful blue green and adding a little bit of that purplish red I've created my own dark almost black color what if I did that again what's a good opposite here how about if I took this blue and added just a teeny bit of this orange am I going to do that again we're creating actually this was the opposite that would probably make it more appropriate but we've got a very dark also almost black but it's got a more interesting color um, range in it it's got a little bit of that color that kind of sparkles through when you're creating artwork if you make your darks out of your paint colors here instead of using black especially when you're doing florals or landscapes it's going to be far more interesting there's a time and place for black but there's also a time and place to skip the black and go right into using your own colors to make those dark values and again if we want something that's really pretty very light maybe a little of that orange and we've got ourselves another very light color now how do I know if I got this right well the fun thing to do is snap a photo convert it into black and white and you'll see if you've got an idea of where your color value ranges are if you're starting to see these colors here as values not just as colors you're going to start getting much better at creating your artwork so I implore you to take some time to look at this and make a value scale for yourself and start looking at your colors as darks and lights and not just as hues and um, I'm going to snap a photo and show you this one in black and white so that we can see if I got it right now I'm not perfect but I know that I'm going to have it somewhere in the right range you can do is take a look at your own artwork so I have a couple of pieces of artwork here that I pulled out some recent work they are florals and I wanted to point out to you where I chose to use the darkest darks from my own colors and adding white and having the lightest lights so I have a fairly good range of value here's some really dark I used a really dark blue here just like the depth in between the florals or the darker green here and um, a lot of mid-tone ranges and then some light you remember yellow is at the top of our wheel so yellow is going to be considered a lighter color you can even add white to it and that's how I get a lot of these really soft colors so I'm going to also show you these pictures in black and white so that you can see whether I got my values right and that's a simple thing you can do every time you make your artwork transfer them in take a snap of photo and I know most of our phones have an app that will change it into black and white and you can see for yourself have I created enough enough depth of black and white now mind you we don't have to have the full range every time so you know we may have the darkest darks and the lightest lights in a painting but you can also choose um, to make sure that you have maybe your darkest dark might lay here and your lightest light is here so sometimes we have high key which is going to be our lighter colors and sometimes we have a lot of dark colors as long as there's some contrast remember that contrast between your colors and they're not all the same value you're going to create a painting with a lot more depth and interest i hope this helps you with this value lesson and um, I would love to see your converted photos from some of your artwork and see if you can't start spotting for yourself where you have strength and value or where you could use a little more punch 
in creating a stronger contrast in your value, all right? Thanks, artists.